we go. So uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. This is a, especially at a very busy time of semester for taking taking an hour out and uh, coming by to play some games. And um, and uh, hello everybody watching. Anybody watching this on the internet? Uh, and so, uh, as promised, I'm going to talk about combinatorial and int give an introduction to combinatorial game theory in six or so games. Uh, yeah, six plus or minus. Well, I'm, <laughs> you know, after I laid out the slides for this last night, well, it might be more like three or four, uh, but we'll see. Um, okay, so uh, without further ado, let's play something. Oops. Uh, maybe there will be some further ado. Well, can I get this to move? Oop, okay, there we go. Um, right. So what is blue? Red. So the first game, uh, and sort of the, this is, I mean, I'm actually going to really follow. Uh, oh, gosh, do I have, yeah, here it is. Ah. Oh, it a free ad for the book. So uh, I'm going to follow this wonderful book, Winning Ways, by uh, uh, Burlakan, Conway, and Guy. Um, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll do a not-so-humble brag. Conway was my PhD advisor, which is sort of how I come to this. Uh, and I'm actually going to use, start off with the classic example of a combinatorial game. Uh, Sort of that is used in uh, in uh, winning ways, and then okay, there we go. Okay, so there, uh, so there, uh, so the idea uh, that you want to keep in mind is that, uh, and we'll and we'll have a very uh, a much more a concrete live version of this in a minute. Um, yeah, gee, I kind of feel like a guy with a mushroom head. Oh, well. Anyway, so uh, the idea is you have a sort of graph involving edge, ed, red and blue edges, and they're attached to the ground. And uh, the rules of the game are as follows. Uh, you have blue and red uh, uh, players taking uh, alternate taking turns. And the, 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 uh, the funny capitalization on blue comes from the idea that, that you want to remember, for actually for the purposes, uh, I guess, for, by, by custom, uh, blue goes with left and red goes with right. And red goes with right is easier to remember. And I guess... So I guess if you know that, then blue goes to the left, I guess makes sense. Anyway, so you have blue and red players that alternate taking turns. Uh, in each turn, the blue or the red player removes an edge of their color. And uh, then the, the interesting part of this, okay, so if it was just that, then that wouldn't be that interesting. But the interesting part of the game uh, 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 is that any edges no longer connected to the ground are also removed. And uh, so the first player unable to move loses. Uh, so there, there's the rules for blue, red, hack and bush. And this is sort of enough to get started uh, with, yeah. Well, let me say, welcome, welcome to game, to the world of games. And um, so, uh, having said, now let's see if I can I can find. Hopefully, I won't bring up my shopping list here. Uh, okay, first of all, hopefully, I will actually get the window. Oh no, that's that's right. This is that's right. Here we go. Six games. Uh, so, uh, so I need I need uh, just two volunteers, and you can sort of say this. So here is a game of uh, a red, blue, hack and bush. And you'll sort of see why I, I, in a minute why I duplicated uh, this game. Uh, and uh, what I actually need is I need some, uh, uh, oh, hi, Jonathan, go ahead. What's up? So what we, yeah, that was actually, okay. so Jonathan, uh, you, can, you can be blue, you can, so. So Jonathan uh, will be will be blue, and I uh, who who wants to be red? Anybody? Uh, all right, I'll be red. Hi, uh, who who said that? Daniel. Oh, hi, Daniel. Okay, so great. So Daniel will be red. Um, and you can say things out loud and or, uh, or uh, put them on the chat. Okay, so now, so uh, somewhat arbitrarily, Jonathan, I'll have you go first. And so you may notice that, that, that you, uh, let's start up, that's a good contrasting color. Um, let's start up here. Whoa, okay, we'll start up here with, with that picture. You'll see why I duplicated this in a minute. Uh, so, um, so, uh, yeah, so, jo so Jonathan, you, you gotta, you gotta take one of the, one of the blue edges. So, uh, what, what number edge do you want to take? Two, four, six, eight, or 10? Six. Okay, great. Uh, okay. So Jonathan is going to take six and which means that it, let's see if I, you know, maybe I should rehearse this. That probably wouldn't have been a good idea. Oh, look, it worked. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, 
It's also, okay, so now, so having taken six, we have this state here, and then, uh, which I will now, so, uh, okay, so duplicate, so, to, so as to record the next, yeah, so I get, okay, I think this might actually work. So the idea is that I'm gonna, I'm gonna record the progress of the game uh, for past posterity as we go along. Okay, Daniel, so you're red. Uh, now you take you take something. Uh, one, uh, three, five, seven, and nine. I'll try three. Okay. Uh, so uh, so Daniel's taken three, uh, which means okay. Uh, Jonathan, uh, your turn. Go ahead and type that on the chat. Two, okay. Oops. Well, that'll be exciting. Ah, if I can. All right. So now Jonathan takes two. And okay, now that's an exciting one because that's gonna just wipe out a whole bunch of stuff. So it wipes out not only two over here, but also all the stuff which is now no longer connected to the ground. So point, there it goes. And okay, so now we're left with this. Uh, uh, Daniel, go ahead, what's your response? <laughs> I'm muted, uh, <laughs> I'll take seven. Seven, okay, uh, good choice, oops. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Okay, so yeah, so uh, right, I wanna, I wanna try to be consistent about recording the entire game here. So I, have to, I just have to remember to, to duplicate every time. There we go. So yeah, so red takes seven, and then, which means that, that this stuff all goes, doink. And now, uh, Jonathan, uh, uh, what's, what's your move next? Yeah, so we have four or eight left. Go with eight. Very good. Okay, so and uh, so as so as you can see, uh, not much choice now, uh, Daniel. If you want to do the honors, five it is. Yeah, five it is. Okay, and then and then I I, I, I will. Uh, to, to make a, a long story short. Um, so then, uh, so then, uh, so since, since, uh, since uh, red just took five, whoops, uh, all this stuff is now gone here. Oops, all this stuff is now gone. Yeah, there we go. And now, so uh, L has only one move is to take this thing and then, uh, but then all that we have left is nothing. Actually, this is this is a this is a worthwhile example to uh, uh, to look at. Uh, what we have here now is now we have a game with no possible moves. Uh, oh, comic songs! <laughs> this is a strange thing about this. I, I really love it. This is the drawing program called Limno. I really love it, except this is a very strange choice of having a default font of comic songs. Anyway, uh, so. That the game with no move, no available moves to anyone is a first player lose. And uh, unfortunately, red uh, first player loss. So red loses. In other words, L wins. Okay, so uh, yay. <laughs> Triumph. There we go. I love it. Old school. Uh, you know, on, an honorable effort on everybody's part. Okay, so that's how you play Blue Red Hackenbush. Um, so, uh, and the, uh, oh yeah, and I guess uh, at some point I will, I you know, if, if for anybody who's interested, I guess I, I will try to preserve this. I'm not sure to what extent uh, this can be preserved. I'll, I'll preserve this and uh, share it with uh, share it with anybody interested, and you, they can sort of keep a record of like uh, the games that are actually played here. Okay, and you, you can sort of see. Some of the other games, uh, I don't know how many of them we'll actually get to today, but you know, there's like uh, some of them may look familiar, and some I know some of them won't because uh, because as far as I know, <laughs> it's only me, like two or three people who ever heard of them. So, any questions about how to play uh, how to play Blue Red Hack and Bush?
Okay, so there are a bunch of questions. There are a bunch of questions that uh, that you might ask, not not sort of you know what in terms of what happened, like in terms of what could have happened. Uh, so is what all is the comic sans? Uh, so question. Here's some questions. What was that the only the best possible outcome for L and R? Uh, does it matter, for example, who goes first? Uh, well, I, I should, yeah. That's a more, that's a too radical question. That's actually not a natural question. Like, it doesn't matter who goes first. Because when you play a game, it really matters who goes first. Like, any, like games that people are actually play for enjoyment. Um, uh, so maybe I'll ask to what extent, extent does it matter who goes first? Um, okay, because spoiler alert, uh, one, uh, something that I, I guess we won't have time to explain, but I'll, I'll, what I'll, that I'll say is true. Uh, the funny thing is it actually doesn't matter who goes first. That's a very strange thing about this kind of game, uh, but, uh, and very surprising. So uh, and it's very different than sort of, like I said, than games that you would actually play for fun. Um, so, you know, there, there are limitations that the things that are more accessible to the mathematical theory tend to be games that, you know, well, you wouldn't actually, you might actually not actually sit down with your, like your five-year-old cousin and play hack and push. Well, you might, but, um, uh, but anyway, so, uh, so yeah, so there, that's, that's, there, there's a game and uh, that, there's an example of the kind of, and here, you know, here's, a, uh, here's the proceedings all the way through the game from, from first step to last step. And there's the kind, there's the kind of question that we can answer uh, in, using combinatorial game theory, you know, uh, what, what is the best possible outcome under, under optimal play? And, uh, and uh, there's, a, there's a strange question like, uh, so, uh, so, oh, so Keith asked, so does it mean you can't make a structure where matters will go first? So the funny thing is uh, in, in blue, red, hacking bush, it, it, you cannot make a structure where matters where it goes first. Um, so uh, that, there's something kind of unusual about the blue redness of it, uh, where matters where it goes first. Uh, uh, and uh, but yeah, I might actually even sort of, we might even have actually have time to discuss that a little bit. So yeah, yeah excellent question, Keith. Um, any other questions? Okay, so uh, let me go back to the slides. All right, so there, there's one example of a game. Now, uh, so uh, uh, so that, like I said, that that raises all kinds of questions. Why we're doing Okay, all right. So um, so the fundamental question of combinatorial game theory really is it's it, it even uh, and even in the, the, the case of games that are sort of closer to things that you play, and you can actually get uh, to, and uh, at the furthest extremes, there are some insights these days about uh, the, uh, the sort of the furthest end of the field. As it goes into um, actual games that people play, um, I think there's some insights into chess endgames and uh, actually Go endgames. I mean, there's actually serious insight into Go, uh, which is actually kind of uh, if you if you if anybody's familiar with that game, and that uh, uh, and that that's maybe closely related to the fact that uh, that computers actually are, also have made pretty serious insight into Go. Um, anyway, so the question is: so given some initial state of the game, you know, so given you know this guy here. Uh, who wins under optimal play? Who, uh, you know, if uh, if everybody makes the smartest move possible at every at every at every turn, uh, who actually wins? And so the uh, and so the the pursuit of combinatorial game theory analyzes this question or this kind of question using a mixture of strategy and combinatorics and algebra. Uh, and uh, and I guess you know, sort of uh, uh, pursue it to my own interest. I, I I tend to sort of uh, uh, emphasize the algebra in some ways. Uh, but you know it's 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 all good. It, it's it, it's all mixed in there somewhere. All right. So uh, uh, okay. So let's well that having said, let's play another game. Uh, uh, can I get two other two more two other volunteers? I want to give the people as many different possibilities as possible. Uh, also, yes. Yeah, so Jonathan says, I guess this doesn't take into account people who either try to play as 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 silly a game as possible or as unpredictably as possible. So the the uh, there's a funny and very not obvious theorem that you play you sort of play at the beginning. Uh, which is that it, um, so you might wonder like, well, it, uh, you know, at some, at some strategy level, does it make sense to like, uh, to have like sort of uh, almost sort of like gambits or bluffs where, you know, you sort of try to lure someone into doing something and that will, uh, and that, uh, so is, is there, 
if, you, if you're sort of not locally optimal, will that somehow be globally optimal? And uh, it's, it's a hard thing to wrap your mind around. It's, and for me, it still is sort of hard, hard to wrap your mind around, but it's actually, it, it's not obvious, but you, you actually don't gain anything by playing non-optimally. Optimally. Um, but it's a little bit circular because that's actually kind of the definition of optimally. Um, yeah, so Jonathan, that's an excellent point. That, that, that's, that's like one of the first things I thought about when I, when I encountered this theory. Uh, so maybe like about, <laughs> about 30 years ago, and I, I, I like sat through like a, half a course and I thought, I don't get this at all. Why can't you just like do something silly and then sort of win? But, you know, there, but, uh, but, uh, but, you, but the funny thing is you actually don't gain, you can show that you don't gain anything by, by, by doing something sort of locally non-optimal. Um, not, it's very much not obvious, but it's true. Anyway, let's play a different game. Um, and this is, this is a historically famous game. Let's play Nim. Uh, let's see, let's see who's up. So who wants to, who wants to play Nim? So could I get two volunteers to play Nim? Nim is a Nim is like the world. Nim is a, come on. Nim is like the most harm, world's most harmless game. <laughs> I'll play Nim. All right. Uh, who's that saying? What's that? Who's who? Uh, who's volunteering? That was Jean Marc. Ah, hi. Hello. Hi. Hello, uh, Jean Marc. And uh, so uh, Jean Marc is a player. One and you'll see when, in a minute why, why I say one instead of instead of left and right. And uh, who wants to who wants to be player two? Uh. I'm gonna. Perfect. Well, neither does John Mark. So, uh, so Walter, I'll, I'll, I'll. Uh, can I, can I ask you to be player number two? And I'll tell you how to play. Okay. So, uh, player two will be Walter. Okay. So the game here. Uh, so the, so the winning and losing uh, rules are exactly the, the winning and lose the, the winning and losing games rules are always the same in combinatorial game theory because that's sort of one of the things that makes the theory work. So the way you lose is that you is you lose when there's no moves left to left to make. Um, uh, so uh, okay. That being said, uh, the rules of NIM are you take a, you take away as many things. So uh, let me see if I can get this to work. Uh, you take as many. So there's things in a stack. There's a, there's a stack of six and a stack of three and a stack of one, as you can see. And you take as many as you like from a single stack. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna. Uh, Stop worrying and learn to love comic songs. There we go. Um, okay, so uh, uh, all right, so uh, so uh, uh, who was our who was our player one? Player one was Jean Marc. Jean Marc, uh, you uh, you can take as many as you like from the stack of six or the stack of three or stack of one, you can say, and just say, you can say what what you want to get, get rid of, uh, or or uh, or type on the chat either way. Wait, sorry, what's my objective? Oh. Uh, so, uh, so the way you the way you win is that uh, you want to be the last person to take away. Here's here's a sort of winning. It's easier to all right. So I, I am enough into this theory that uh, that I sort of get used to saying like well, this is all you lose. Well, you, the way you win is you want to be the last person to take away some uh, cakes. I guess uh, this being a sort of a British field, you, you tend to say things like they're cakes or something. I don't know, they're blocks or or coins or something. Um, so if you're the last, the way you win is by being, by being the last person to take away any objects. Um, so does that make sense? And when, when you say take them away, is this like a, like a towers of Hanoi thing where like, am I moving them onto a different stack or I, I figured just like, you, we're just going to erase them. Oh, they're just gone. They're just gone. Yeah. Just like, just like hack and Bush. Remember we sort of erase stuff. Oh, okay. 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 But, and, and. And so and like, can I delete them out of the middle? I, I'm still not sure what I'm trying to do here. Oh, it doesn't it doesn't matter if you take them out of the middle or the top because I'll take them from the top because they're just in the stack. Oh, okay. So you just yeah, there's, there's, there's no geometry here. So it's just like a pile of six things. Pile of oh, things. I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Yep. So just how many how many oh, things do you want? Are. To I got you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Two, four, six. Uh, oh, I see. Right. Right. Cause I don't know how many he's okay. Now I'm starting to get the game. Okay. Uh, take away two, please. So, uh, from which stack? Um, wait, does it matter? 
Yeah, I mean, well, you could take away you could take okay. away two from the stack of six. Sure. Yeah, let's do that one. Or, or, or yeah, or just just you know, all your options. You could also take away two from the stack of three. Uh, two from the stack of six, please. Okay, two from the stack of stack of six. Oh, and is it a legal move to take like one from the first stack, one from the second stack, one from the third? Is that ah? Legal? But yeah, well, no, because if you could do that, one of them, you could just say I, I'll take all of them, and then you win. Okay, right. Okay, yeah. okay. So it does matter which stack in that. Yeah, okay. it, it matters. It matters from which stack in that. Well, it, I guess I guess one the you, the game will change subtly. Uh, depending on which stack you take from, uh, but then two, yeah, it matters. Certainly matters from which stack because you only take from one stack. Otherwise, you you know, first person would just win by taking all the cakes. Okay. Oh, in that case, I want to change my answer. Let's delete the one that's by itself. Okay. So you want to delete the lone the lone guy. Yeah. All right. That's right. You can tell him it's getting serious here because I call it a guy, um, <laughs> which is a some sort of strange <laughs> some sort of strange Asian American cultural habit, like. I, I don't know if you noticed. I, I, it's my theory that Asian American instructors, when things get really serious, tend to start to call things guys. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So that that was that was move number one. And now, uh, Walter, uh, how many do you want to remove from uh, from which stack? Two from the stack of three. Okay. Great. And so. So in terms of the effect, that'll be like doink, Ugh. doink, doink. Okay, uh, John Mark, your and, turn. And sorry, the, the objective is to, to make it so that the other player has nothing to take away? Correct. Okay. Oops. Nothing to take, okay. Then so, yeah. I would like to take all except for one from the big stack. Ah, okay. There we go. Boop. All right. So uh, that's a bold move. <laughs> All right. So now, and uh, perhaps John Mark, you may have had kind of an insight here. I like this. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, uh, Walter. Well, I guess you, there's not much choice of what to do, uh, but <laughs> go ahead and let's make it official. Yeah. You you'll take one from one of those stacks, and that's not they're all they're both the same at this point, uh, which I, which actually is actually an interesting uh, insight at this point. Boop. And then uh, and then yes, and then uh, uh, John Mark takes yep. the last the last guy, and then all that's again all that's left is oops. All that's left is nothing, and so the, again, this is the empty. The, this is the empty game, uh, uh, a very important uh, important game. And so, uh, player one wins. All right. So, uh, so, so, yay! So there's there's the there's the entirety of a game of Nim, and uh, so any any questions about any questions about how that goes? Yeah, that's very very. Uh, uh, Daniel, go ahead. Uh, so when thinking of a winning strategy, does it make more sense to kind of work backwards? Because the game always kind of simplifies down to just these first few. Uh, yes. Um, though, uh, though uh, being uh, <laughs> in, mathemati in mathematician, of course, well, not of course, but uh, in mathematician in this particular context, working, working backwards means induction, yes. So everything. So basically, the, the the fundamental tool in all combinatorial game theory, at least you know, to the extent that I understand it, is induction. You prove everything by induction. Uh, and uh, 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 if you think about that, right? That's what. Uh, so right, induction is the same thing as sort of recursion, right? Uh, if you're a computer programmer, is if you're a regular person, the same thing as working backwards. Like you sort of know how it would how how we you know. Well, I, I mean, I think this is. So I I want to circle this position here. This is uh, this is an interesting position this, and that we'll come back to. This is a key. Idea. This is secretly a key idea that, uh, that Jean Marc saw here. That that, that somehow, if you if you, when you come down to the, the the situation where you have two two cakes, uh, uh, these two these two stacks of one cake, well then then uh, then you then you then, and the other person has to go. Then they, then you won. Uh, so that, that we'll come back to that key idea in a bit. Okay, uh, but yes, uh, uh, yeah. So Daniel, uh, excellent insight, 
And uh, so the answer is yes. And the word for that is, is, is actually mathematical induction. Well, that has two words, but you know, you know what I'm saying. That, uh, so, uh, so I think, I think uh, for folks here who have, who have taken uh, even Math 42, um, this, this is really all about, secretly all about induction. And it's not so secretly, well, I'll sort of explain, I'll give you a good example of that in a second. Okay, so, um, so uh, any questions about this game of NIM? Yeah, I mean, so, uh, so, well, uh, I really, uh, so, I mean, there, there, this is, this is actually, uh, so this something I actually just learned uh, this year only, I've been, you know, I've been studying these things for a while, is that NIM was actually invented, so, the, uh, to, and NIM is not like a natural childhood game, you know, I think people sort of pass it off, like, oh, it's a child, the childhood game of NIM, where you have, like, stuck to the, no, 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 no kid ever played NIM before 1900, uh, the, the, actually, the reason why, Nim was, Nim was actually invented by a mathematician. Well, uh, I should know who the name of this mathematician since I'm giving a clue. I don't actually. Uh, it's either Sprague or Grundy, uh, one of those, uh, because this, this is, we're, we're about to sort of get into what's called Sprague-Grundy theory. Uh, and, uh, and I think one of those two actually invented Nim to illustrate, this, uh, to illustrate uh, the, uh, the theory, uh, because uh, 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 the sort of earliest version of this, of, of of combinatorial game theory, sort of the, the first big result in it, uh, goes back to uh, Sprague or Sprague slash Grundy. Boy, I should really know the, the history of that. I don't know. Look it up. It's in Wikipedia, I'm sure. Um, and it might even be true. <laughs> Who knows? Um, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, so it's basically, uh, but it, I, I think basically the game was invented to illustrate this theory. I mean, I, uh, well, I don't know. Okay, well, we'll get to that. Instead of me talking about history that I don't really know about, let's talk about a different game, which I call NIMSTRING. Um, and this, this I think, um, as far as I know, uh, I think this is something I invented. Maybe I don't know. Maybe, um, uh, but uh, it's a. You'll see it's a very similar thing momentarily because the rule here, oops, the rule here is that you are to uh, take as many as you like in a single. Path, linear path, and, and uh, so and uh, so it's really the same kind of deal as NIM. You you, you know you, there's a stacks of things and you take as many as you like. Uh, but here the limitation instead of having you know sort of uh, there instead of having just you know stacks of things and just numbers, it's basically so NIM is basically a numerical limitation. You know, you know, six three one uh, for NIM string. What you do is uh, there's actually sort of a geometric limitation. So you, you can take as many things you as like, as long as they're in the same linear path. Okay, so uh, uh, can I get at least, I think we can, yeah, we should do, do at least one more game uh, interactively. So uh, who wants to be- How do you win? Uh, and the winning, uh, hey, thank, thanks, Peter. Uh, the winning is exactly the same as before. Uh, you, uh, the, uh, you lose when you're, uh, you win by, uh, by being the last person to remove any of the dots. So, so, uh, to, so to be clear, I guess I should say take, uh, to be clearer anyway, see, take as many vertices as you like that lie in a single linear path. Uh, so, uh, and then, so when I say path, I mean in the, in the uh, or linear path in the, in, the, in the graph theoretic sense. So, you know, it doesn't have to be in a straight line like as drawn on the page, it just has to be a doink, 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 doink. Uh, no, uh, no backtracking. Uh, see, so who wants to be player one? Hmm. I feel like I should like randomly pick somebody to, to be player one. Oh, uh, who, who volunteered to be player one? Or is that a thumbs up? Pick somebody randomly. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I can play, Tim. Okay, great. Okay, Katarina, great. Uh, you'll you'll be player one. So, uh, so you can take as many vertices as you like in the simple path, right? In a simple path, exactly right. Right. 
So uh, which which number of vertices uh, do you want to pick? So so they are two, they are they are forest right? They are two trees right? Correct. Right. I can take as many as I like, and then they disappear from the tree, right? Correct. And all they they disappear, and all the edges connected to them disappear. But uh, oh. but mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but not all but not the vertices but not the vertices that are connected to those edges. Uh, well, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 if I disappear two, three, four. Okay, great. So. Uh, you know, I mean, I haven't really told you how to play the game. I can't say I, I, I precisely know how to do it myself either. So if you take, <laughs> so thank you for volunteering. And uh, so if you take just, two, three, four. Uh, I like three. <laughs> good. So, uh, so, what hap so what happens is that then you, uh, okay, oops. Well, I meant that's fine. Uh, so three, so vertex three disappears, vertex two disappears. And oops, we're supposed to disappear there. And vertex two disappears, and and all the pieces of and so all the, all the leftover pieces disappear, but one and five and seven do not disappear. And I look I, I, that was silly. I copied this too early, so hang on. Uh, so uh, yeah, so while I am busy sort of doing the thing I meant to do, uh, so uh, who wants to go? Who wants to be player two? Okay, Jonathan, you can go again. Uh, so, uh, uh, Jonathan, what uh, what do you want to take? So, anything anything that they're uh, in a simple path, as uh, as Katarina said. Oh, just so just the vertex thirteen. Which is fine. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you can take things one at a time if you like. And so, uh, so there goes 13. Okay. And now, uh, Katarina, what do you want to do in response? So there, there's the status over here. Okay, let me think. Okay, so, so I'm deciding if I want to do a, an odd or an even number of uh, vertices. So that's, I don't know if it matters, does it matter? I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I should though, I, I have actually had students, I have actually had students who, who, have, uh, who have proven this, this case. Um, and, uh, but I, I just don't remember the answer. So, uh, you know. It's fine. I don't know how to win at this point either. So um, it reminds me of the Yusufus, which there is a game where you you eliminate prisoners after case steps, so you can predict who will win. But let me. Oh see. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, right? so that's one of those grim things. Yes, yes, yes. Right. right, right. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So. So. Uh, so I try to do a mini max or something like that. See, uh, okay. So it doesn't matter if I win. So let's say uh, nine and twelve. Okay, pick nine and twelve. Um, yeah, it's just a game, um, as they say. Okay, so uh, pick nine and twelve. Okay, so. Um, So Jonathan, your response. A 
Okay, uh, Jonathan, you take six. And uh, yeah, so let me, and let me say, this is, that was a very good move uh, because, and I, uh, so, and uh, yeah, for the sake of time and say, uh, I'm gonna, uh, let me actually sort of pull up and, and because it will, one for the sake of time and two, because this will actually illustrate an interesting principle. Uh, let's stop here for a second. And, but we'll come back in a minute and prove that uh, that uh, this is now, I, I can't remember, uh, so this is, wait, so Katarina was, uh, oops, I can't remember. Katarina, were you player one or player two? One. Or you player one? Okay. So, so is, is there a strategy that player one wins ever? Um, sometimes, um, oh. it, it, uh, it depends. I mean, uh, you know, so for example, if you have just a straight line, okay, so here's a really boring game that player one wins. If you have just a straight line, well, then player one takes everything and then player one wins. Uh, okay, I know that doesn't seem very interesting, <laughs> but, uh, but, so, but I wanna, so I wanna, uh, I think probably in the remaining 20 minutes, yeah, so probably the next 15 minutes, we'll go through enough of the theory to, to sort of explain why this is, so this is, so player one now loses. Player one who has to go next loses. Why? Uh, yeah. So that that's something. That, uh, let's we'll prove. Well, I'll sort of prove that. I mean, uh, prove that modulo is something that looks innocent. That I'll make sound innocent, but you know, maybe now that I've sort of identified it as not being innocent, it really takes a lot of. Well, it took me a long time to to understand. Um, okay. So we'll we'll hold that there for a minute. But I guess I guess. Um, like, I guess the relevant thing, or you might even you might even sort of see like, well, there's an even number of dots. At this point, all you can do is take a dot, and so well, you just alternate, and then player one loses. Uh, but uh, the, but this is a sort of, it's really kind of the same key idea as what's as what's going on over here. Uh, and and we'll talk about it. So let me go back to uh, let me go back to this. So there there's nim and there's nim string, and this is yeah, this is not just so so I'll talk a little bit about the theory and then. Uh, and then I think, uh, in, yeah, so when I say six or so game, by six, I guess I mean three. <laughs> uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do four. We'll see, we'll see where we get to. Uh, but I think now is, now is a good time to sort of go back and do some of the theory and, uh, and uh, finish that up. Okay, so, but good, we played, we played a bunch of games, which is really, really the important part of this. Uh, all right, so I wanna talk about the sum of two games. Uh, so yeah, so, uh, so for the theory, uh, yeah, is it's sort of the next few slides is talking about the sum of two games. When is a game equal to zero? Uh, the negative of a game, uh, when are two games equal? Um, and, uh, and then uh, what, what you might call the MEX principle. Um, okay, so um, all right, the sum of two games. So if G and H are games, uh, and now uh, let's see. So here, uh, here are two games. I'll just I'll do a very simple stick figure. So there's there's one game. There's a game of Hackenbush, and you can sort of mix games. You could mix. You could, if you like, you could mix together Hackenbush and Nim. So here's a sort of Nim game. Uh, and so if this, and the point is, if this is G. Uh, I should make this a, a more neutral color here. So black, if this is G and this is H, then the two games played together, G plus H, or is, is, that's the definition of G plus H. So if, if you have a game of uh, red, blue, hack, uh, blue, red, hack and bush over here on the, on the left and a game of NIM on the right, uh, then in the game G plus H, uh, in turn, each player gets to choose what they want to do. They could uh, they could take something from the Hackenbush side, or they could choose to do something from the Nim side, uh, but not both. Uh, and that, that that is the definition of G plus H. It's a strange kind of thing, but there it is. So um, any questions about what G plus H is? For now. I mean, other than the very natural question, like why on earth would you call this plus? Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll sort of see why, why you call this plus in a, in a bit. Yeah, 
why would he call this plus? Hmm. So uh, when, uh, oh, right. Uh, so, uh, oh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just duplicate that guy. So, uh, so a game is said to be equal to zero when under optimal play, uh, uh, either, player, either player loses if they go first. So examples, so here's example number one. Uh, example number one is the empty game, which has no moves possible by anybody. Well, it's certainly true. So that game is said to be equal to zero uh, because either player loses if they go first because there's no moves to make. And remember the way you lose, so remember, so that th this is sort of why, yeah, that's, that's why I said I sort of started by saying, like, well, I'm gonna define what losing means. And then everybody's like, well, what does winning mean? I don't want to hear what losing means. That's un-American. I want to know how to win. I know, but uh, but the, the mathematically the thing that's easier to, to define is uh, you is that you lose uh, the first player unable to move loses. Uh, oh gosh, I should I should know uh, this is called, I think it's called the normal normal play condition. Uh, there are other there are other uh, other ways to uh, express express winning and losing, but this is sort of the standard one. And then, uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is sort of, this is the standard one. So, so remember, uh, as as uh, Peter so uh, so helpfully reminded reminded me to to, to mention, uh, you know, in every game in in this theory, uh, common, in, in theory of combinatorial games, um, uh, it's the way that you lose is always by having nothing to do. Uh, uh, which means that the way you win is by forcing the other player uh, to have nothing to do. So is there, is, is there a player who goes second always loses under optimal? Yes. Um, so again, uh, so again, there's a silly one. I mean, there's a silly one. Like, so if, if you have a single NIM stack, um, then that's, that, that is a game where, 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 the, where the first player wins, second player loses, because the, under optimal play, the first player is going to take the whole thing and then well, they win. Um, so that seems kind of silly. That doesn't seem like a very interesting way to, to have a first player win. Uh, but uh, but as we'll see in a few slides, uh, actually every every winning game is a, of this type is equivalent to to something like that. Well, in fact, every game is equivalent to something like that. Um, so yeah, so John Mark, good question, and and the answer is yes. But it's uh, but it's not in sort of uh, uh, it's not. Well, uh, and it turns out that everything, as we'll see in a few slides. Uh, every every first player win game is equivalent to some name stack where you just take the whole thing, but it, not in an obvious way. Um, so um, yeah, so uh, right. So here's one. So uh, sorry. So uh, just to, just to resume uh, the 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 examples here. So one example of of a game where that equal is equal to zero is a game where you, there's nothing to do. Here's a here's a more interesting one. Uh, Uh, so you can take this, uh, and what you can do is take the same thing and change and negate all the colors. I'm going to change all the blues to red, all the reds to blue. All right. So I hope, I hope you see that's these are the so these are the same. This is the same game twice. Uh, it's the same game except I switch red and blue. So uh, and uh, and as the as the poem goes, you can tell this is a very, this is a very British subject here. Uh, this is the Tweedledum, Tweedledum, and here's Tweedledee, as a Lewis Carroll poem goes. So, um, so this is, uh, this is, so this here is a, a, a second player loss game because, uh, because no matter who goes, whether it's red or blue, uh, the idea is that uh, I should have written down what the tweet. It would have been easier at this point. I had written down the tweet. So that is that is whatever player one does uh, in in one component. Player two uh, does the opposite. Does the same thing in opposite. Color than the other. So, for example, uh, I'll just I'll just do like uh, one response here. Um, so, if uh, if it, let's say if player one uh, if player one takes say that 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 middle edge and, and therefore sort of truncates uh, truncates the 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 Tweedledum 
sort of from the waist up. Then player two will respond in the same color in Tweedle D. And uh, and then you're sort of and and then by induction, <laughs> and by induction you have a, you have a second player loss uh, because yeah this really and this really is induction I think uh, I can't I can't remember who who's, who I was talking about um, uh, look, looking ahead I think I think uh, I can't remember was, it, was that David I think um, anyway so yeah so it's Daniel sorry uh, yeah as, so Daniel said well can't you sort of work backwards yeah so here and here working backwards is really induction so uh, because if player one takes if, if player one Oh, wait, is my flashlight here? Here's my flashlight. So if player one takes the torso of Tweedledum, then player two takes the torso of Tweedledee. And then what's all that's left is the legs and both thing and both and of both figures, which must be a, a which must be equal to zero. It must be a second player loss by induction, because now we're having we have the same Tweedledee, Tweedle, Tweedledum, Tweedledee, uh, but with with fewer edges. Uh, and the, so what's and the thing that's always fun about this, I guess by fun, I mean perverse, <laughs> perversely amusing uh, for mathematicians is that the base case, so the base case in this, in the, in this subject is always empty or almost always empty. Jim, um, I have a question. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, in in this, this argument by symmetry, doesn't the first player lose? The first player uh, will be stuck. Oh, did I did I say uh, did I say uh, you said the second player loses? It's the first player that loses here. Well, okay, then I, I I meant to say I meant to say first player loss, right? Okay, it, it's yeah. an argument by symmetry. Yeah, it's an argument by symmetry, and uh, remember, so this game is equal to zero because it's a first player loss. My bad. Uh, second player win. Um, yeah, I guess it's better to say first player. It's better to talk about who loses because losing is sort of being uh, closely connected to zero. Uh, yeah, sorry. thank you, Peter. It's a first player loss. And I don't know, uh, whoever, if you're listening to this on the internet, go back and erase all the things that said <laughs> second player loss, but I said any of those things. Uh, yeah, so this, this, these are, so this game here, the Tweedledum Tweedledee game is a first player loss, second player win, uh, because, uh, because whatever player one does, then player two can respond and, uh, uh, by symmetry and then, uh, and then just sort of keep going until there's nothing left, which is really at, the, at, at, its, at its core an induction argument. An induction argument on the number of available moves, and uh, where the base case is there's there's the game with no moves, uh, the empty game. Uh, yeah. Okay. So there we go. So Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Uh, so so does that make sense? Uh, Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Okay, um, so uh, so one thing I want to point out about that is that uh, that actually gives us a little bit of insight into what was going on with these games here. So uh, so when I said there's a key idea here, uh, so uh, we see that at this stage over here, both of these are are zero games. That is first player loss, second player win, uh, because by Tweedledum, Tweedledee, uh, because when your when your things are green, the opposite color, uh, you know. So, so uh, traditionally, uh, the notation for for moves that anybody can do. Oh yeah, I forgot to <laughs> I forgot to mention. Oh my bad. So both nim and nim string are what are called impartial games. Impartial games, uh, and they're impartial games because any either there's sort of no. Uh, uh, there's no distinction between either player. I mean, uh, so basically, any move of taking a, taking a string or taking some cakes or whatever, uh, any move is is uh, is uh, accessible to any player. Uh, so they're impartial games. And when you have an impartial game, uh, uh, an, an impartial game, uh, you are your own negative, as it were. So you're, you're tweedle to go from tweedle dum to tweedle to tweedle d to tweedle dum. You don't change anything. So uh, so. Uh, so here's a weird thing. So uh, more generally, if G is impartial, here's a weird impartial. And this is a very weird thing. And so this is where it's sort of where we start to leave a realm of arithmetic. G plus G equals zero. Right, because if you have if you have one copy of a game and then the same copy of the game over here, and it's an impartial game, so you know 
anything, anybody can do any move in, in either one, um, then, uh, then that's a second player loss because whatever one player, whatever one player does uh, in over here, uh, the other player can do over here and vice versa. Uh, so yeah, so that's, so that, so it's, so that sort of relates to the fact that we had an even, and we sort of ended up here in that, in that place in both, in both these games. Uh, when we had an even number of stacks over here, uh, uh, that, mean, that means that means the, first, the player who had to go next loses. And over here, we have an even number of dots. The player, the player who has to go next loses. So uh, in some ways, uh, one, one of your goals in an impartial game is to sort of uh, might be to one strategy might be to sort of get to a point where you have uh, you know, a pairs of sort of pairs of, of positions that are identical because identical positions like twice those are equal to zero. Anyway, so that's that's one tiny little strategy thing that, that comes out of the theory. Uh, okay. So yeah, there's a, uh, so sum of two games when it, uh, when the game equals zero. Okay, so the negative of a game. So um, so by Tweedledum, Tweedledee, uh, the kinds of games we've seen so far have negatives, which means that the negative of G is the same game as G with the colors reversed. Right. So this is uh, here. This is sort of saying that Tweedledee equals minus Tweedledum. Uh, so we can therefore uh, define g minus h to be g plus minus h. I don't want. I don't know. I, have, I was going to draw a picture here, but uh, uh, you know. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. G minus h is equal to g plus minus h. I don't think I wrote that. I mean, really need a picture here. So uh, so two games are. We say that two games g and h are equal. And here I'll I'll just sort of box the word equal. Uh, because equal doesn't mean exactly what you might think it means at first. This is one of the subtle part, parts of the theory. Uh, so two games, we say that two games are equal uh, exactly when uh, exactly when g minus h is zero. So that, in other words, g minus h is a first player loses game. Uh, so it's not at all obvious, but it turns out that if g equals h, then g and h have the same sort of end result under optimal play. And so, uh, and that, and that, and the fact that this works. It, that's really kind of what makes the algebraic part, algebra part of the theory work. Uh, yeah, so G, uh, all right, so uh, here, here is an example. Uh, so, uh, oh, sorry, here, here's one more thing. And we can get to, get to an open problem, I think, uh, at least as far as I know, it's not solved. Um, and, and then I think, uh, and then we'll give up because <laughs> it's almost four o'clock. All right, so uh, let's star n be the nim heap with nim nim heap with n blocks in it. So uh, this is, oops, I'll just make the. Uh, all right, well, color coordination what separates us from the lower animals. So I'll, I'll just keep doing this. So this is so. For example, this is star four. Um, so if star, let's star n be the the nim heap with 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 n blocks, just a single nim heap. Uh, so theorem, uh, and this theorem has sort of has two parts to it, uh, and, is, and and it's always kind of the kind of the weird so, sort of circular part nature of proofs in combinatorial game theory that you kind of want to prove these things together. Uh, so G be a finite impartial game. Uh, so the Sprague Grundy theorem says that G, in the sense of equals that we just said, and the, uh, that you know, G plus that equals zero, uh, that any any impartial game G is equal to uh, star n for some uh, for some n. Which is called the nim value, or I think, uh, uh, well, that's the that's the playful way to talk about it, but the serious way to talk about it is the Sprague Grundy value, I believe, of G. Um, and uh, so uh, I can't remember. Uh, I can't. Who asked about? Is there? Uh, is there? Yeah. So John Mark asked, is there a scenario where the player who, player who goes second always loses under optimal play? Uh, so if you have, so and the answer is if you have star n, where n is not equal to zero. Uh, and whenever you have star n for n equal, whenever your spray Grundy value is non-zero, uh, then uh, uh, then uh, under optimal play, the first player wins because you know, because your game is going is equivalent to just taking a whole nim stack. You have a, you have a single nim stack, you just take the whole thing. Um, uh, that being but that being said, it's very much not obvious, and there there are all kind, there are, there are many many uh, well known circumstances where it's very difficult to compute. Uh, the spray Grundy value of a, of a game, and so you, it's, uh, you know, so there there are long-standing open problems about like, is the spray Grundy value of this game zero? Um, you know, we don't know. Uh, and just and just because the 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 complicate the sort of uh, complexity and the uh, uh, hey, computer science people who showed up today, thank you very much for coming. Uh, the complexity in the computer science uh, 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 sense is 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 very large very quickly. All right, so there's there's a spray Grundy theorem, and the second one is uh, is a way to compute. The, uh, the Sprague uh, 
uh, Grundy value of, of a given position. So let S be you know, star zero and star one and so on. Let that be the set of all nim values of all positions to which you can move from G. Uh, then G equals star N, where uh, star N is the first nim value listing from, li missing from that list S, the minimal excluded value or the max value. Okay, um, so, uh, so uh, here, and here's just a very uh, one minute quick uh, uh, level sketch of the proof. You do this by induction on the number of subpositions of G, because it's all you do everything by induction in, in, uh, in combinatorial game theory. Uh, this is true for the empty game. Uh, the, there's no moves possible that that both that uh, that so the first nim value missing is uh, because there's there's no there's the the list is empty so star zero is the first missing nim value and uh, and is it equal to star zero for something which is the uh, and so this is true for the empty game um, all right and then uh, so proceeding by induction. Uh, if star n is the first value missing from s, then uh, okay, and here I'm missing, uh, omitting some stuff, but not 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 that much actually. Uh, then you show that g plus star n is equal to zero, which is the same thing as saying that uh, that g is equal to star n because plus equal plus one equals minus one. Uh, so uh, yeah, so here's a weird thing about about impartial games: plus plus is equal to minus uh, because n, every because every impartial game is equal to its own negative, right? That's, that's, that's the thing we just saw from, from looking at those, uh, those NIM values. Uh, so then you, then you show that uh, G plus star n is equal to zero by exhibiting, by just, you sort of write down a winning strategy for the second player, no matter what the first player does. Okay, so uh, that, that was too quick. Uh, yeah, we have negative one minutes left, so uh, there's, there's not enough time to sort of really absorb that. But that, I hope that gives some idea of the flavor of the proofs. You sort of, it takes a long time to get to, what the truth is, I mean, so here's the, here's how the pursuit of this, of this subject goes. You take a long time to figure out what the truth is, and then the proof kind of writes itself because it's a strategy. I mean, that's not quite true, but you know, it's more or less, more or less true. Yeah, thanks for, thank you, Walter. Okay, so let me, so let me start, finish by uh, uh, just quickly listing um, uh, the open problem of, of nim strings. So uh, a nim string hand, uh, so we have that game of nim string. Here's a nim string hand. It's got like fingers. This is this is me waving goodbye, I guess. There's a finger with like lots of like too many knuckles. Bye, <laughs> bye. Uh, to those of you who have to go. So uh, so define a nim string hand to be uh, something like that. You know, it's it's a bunch of strings joined together a single vertex. So uh, the open problem is to calculate the nim value of every hand of fingers of length uh, most three. And I say at most three because of the fingers of the, the hands of fingers at most length of most two. That was uh, completed by a team of students uh, last year, James Crowley and Jennifer Liu. So there's something to build on, which is that some pluses and minuses. And the proofs, as, as we were all, as I was sort of referring to, all involve induction and establishing a periodic pattern. And so really the main work involved, so this is something that's really approachable. And let me put that, stop on this advertisement. Um, uh, so really the main work in this involves generating lots of examples and looking for patterns. So like I said, uh, let me I'll put that by down here. Uh, thank you for coming everybody. Uh, and uh, and I, will, I will take some questions and otherwise say bye. So uh, questions. When you say uh, uh, looking for periodic patterns, do you typically, like you're doing that by hand or, or do you and your students typically like write code that uh, tries out a bunch of examples? Uh, you, you do a, the first few examples by hand to get a feel for it. Right? it. It is kind of important to do some examples by hand to get a feel for it, but then, yes, that's right. Then you write code and you write code and see the pattern. And, but then, and then once you see the pattern, you sit down and you're, you write a proof of it. And, right. uh, Generally, I mean, generally sort of once you know the pattern, uh, the, the pattern of, I mean, it, it's so a lot, a lot of it, when you have these sort of uh, uh, impartial games with, with some sort of parameter in, in it, um, uh, then, uh, uh, then, uh, then you, then it's usually not so bad to figure out an induction proof for the, for the, for the, uh, for the, for the full case, but, uh, you know, but figuring out the pattern is really takes a lot of work. So does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. I could see how something like this you'd get really like addicted to thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, um, yeah, 
it's 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 a lot of fun. And John has will you will, will be, yes uh, there uh, I will send out a I'm going to put this on YouTube. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on YouTube unlisted. Hi YouTube unlisted. And uh, so it, it it's not going to stay private per se, but uh, it won't show up on, show up on searches. So uh, and, and future students who, who are interested can you know. So I'll put that and I'll tell everybody in the colloquium, and uh, future students can sort of look at that too. So uh, Jonathan, that, that answer your question. All right. Uh, any other questions? So, so I have a question. This sure. name game and the name string. Do you have any, uh, co you know, com complexity result? Like, is it like I don't know? This oh, that's a good question. Um, so, uh, so uh, the answer. <laughs> well, okay. Without thinking about it, I mean. So uh, let's see. So actually, let's. That is a really interesting question because um, because. Uh, let me go back to, so NIM is actually solvable because uh, uh, the, the sort of the surprise, there's a thing called NIM arithmetic uh, uh, where, where upon, so, uh, okay. So let me first, I should just say, I don't know. And that's, that's an interesting and open question. Um, so let me, let me sort of give, uh, give uh, some sort of general background to that, to that question of complexity, because uh, if you, if you, and if you sort of see, uh, if uh, I'll post the slides for this, and you'll see that uh, actually the questions for both, I think, for blue red chomp, and uh, for blue red chomp here, this is an old project that uh, 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 it really comes down to a complexity question. Uh, so it, any basically any sufficiently interesting game turns out to be like, uh, uh, let's see, so at least NP NP hard, and then I think uh, a lot of games are P space complete. So there's actually a class at MIT. Uh, uh, on complexity theory, where uh, I think uh, the final project for for the class, you know, it's like a it's like a graduate class, and the, the final project is like you get a team of three people and you prove something is like NP complete or P space complete or something like that. Um, so you know, most interesting stuff is. Uh, uh, wait, I, I I shouldn't I shouldn't be telling the computer scientists this. <laughs> so Katarina, most interesting stuff is is like NP hard or P space complete or something. Yeah, a, a lot of games with two players, they are P space complete, right? Uh, uh, where yeah, so the, yes. it reminds me of another problem, another game, right? With a uh, with the two coffee shops where you just want to put your yeah, coffee shops uh, uh, in nodes, but um, uh, you don't want them to put next next to each other, right? And they want to maximize uh -huh. their profit. So this seems yeah, but yeah, yeah. So um, so on the one hand, you know, like. Uh, I, I I gather I'm, I don't I know a book is about P space so P space complete so I, I but my, uh, I gather that like any really any sort of sufficiently interesting game is going to be complete P space complete. On the other hand, NIM uh, is actually actually boils down to like XOR arithmetic. So uh, so one sort of uh, so uh, one sort of surprising thing is that if you have what well, we start off with star six and star three. And and star one, and uh, so uh, let's see, and so that turns out to be uh, so. If you write that out, so let's see. If you write out the binary digits of that, that's going to be one one zero, uh, zero one one, and zero zero one. And it turns out that that uh, that uh, if you if you add the binary digits together uh, with XOR, uh, then you get. That would be that would be a silly thing to do, right? But then you get star, you get four, and it turns out that star six plus star three plus star one equals star four. So, uh, so secretly, somebody was asking earlier, uh, is there is there a situation where this is secretly a first player move, uh, player win? Yes. Uh, so this this initial this initial position here, uh, six six three one, is actually a first player win. But the very non obvious first uh, the the winning first move is actually to take four. You take four coins from the first stack and you get star two plus star three plus star one, and uh, which very non-obviously uh, is equal to star zero. Uh, anyways, yeah, but if you're interested in that, uh, if you're interested in that, yeah, go buy this, <laughs> go get this book or you can talk, talk to me later and we, uh, we, we can talk about it. Maybe, maybe I can even sort of try to remember how the proof goes. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, so yeah, so there's the, uh, so, uh, so to answer your question, uh, uh, there, uh, on the one extreme, there's like things that are, you know, P space complete on the other, ex uh, other extreme, there are a few things that you can like completely solve with arithmetic. 
Um, and uh, but uh, but even the even there are even things that sort of you can solve by arithmetic uh, that in principle that in practice are actually piece space complete. Um, and I believe I, actually I, I know uh, let's see I know blue red Hackenbush is NP hard. I don't, I don't actually know how it is because I, 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 I know really nothing about piece space. So uh, piece space stuff. I don't even know the definition of what piece space is. You'll have to tell me sometime. Uh, so. Um, so, but I, I would imagine I would get, I would guess that a blue red hacking bush is probably uh, uh, in, in that category. It'd be it'd be interesting if we're actually in the middle, uh, or actually in, like NP complete but not P space complete. That would, I would find that really interesting. But I don't know, but I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Bye, John Mark. Okay, I think I think I should probably turn the recording off. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, anyway, if you have more questions, I'll, I, I can hang around for a sec. But uh, we'll turn off the recording now. And thanks everybody for coming on the, on at the end of a, a very tough semester, very tough year. So thanks everybody, bye. Thank you for the talk. Welcome, bye.